gluttony. Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Today is day 16 and 17 of the November 30 day gratefully prepared challenge. Things just weren't working. The last couple days have been a little crazy, but I have to say that I am very thankful for a bunch of things. I'll let you guys get a chance to get on here. And for those of you that are new, um, that haven't been part of the, the challenge, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash g-p and read about what we're doing. Um, I just feel that when you are noticing the things in your life um, that you should be grateful for and show a little gratitude in your life that you are focusing on the positive, you tend to be happier and more blessed. And hey, Sharon, good to see you. And um, by doing that, it also enables you to enjoy your life better, be happier, and, and learn better. And that's why we're kicking in the preparedness side of things as well. So, um, I see a bunch of you out there. I would love to know where you are from and what you are grateful for today. And if you need assistance in your preparedness or things you'd like to learn or uh, celebrations in either, that would be great. Feel free to share. This is a two-sided event. I'm hoping that you guys will join me. Um, again, this is day 16 and 17. Um, we have been having problems with our solar, uh, so today I am absolutely thrilled and blessed to have our solar back up and running properly and to have uh, been able to easily figure out what was going on, um, that it wasn't a large expense of any kind. So we are thoroughly celebrating that and high in the clouds today on that one because that was that was a little bit of a, a weight on our shoulders not knowing what was going on. So uh, I am also very thankful. Um, yesterday I had a lot of I've had a lot of people reaching out and sharing. You know they're thankful for this um, uh, challenge that I have going on. And uh, just I get a lot of emails and messages of people thanking me for what we do and. I really feel very blessed that God is using myself and my family as a vessel to teach and share and, and share our faith uh, with other people. I just really feel that I am living my life's purpose and it's just an awesome thing and I wish that for you all because it's a great feeling when you know or feel uh, in your heart that you are doing what you're supposed to be in life. So I wanted to share that and um, like I said, feel free those of you that are jumping in share uh, where you're from, what you are grateful for, and uh, any celebrations or questions on preparedness, feel free to join in. But I also wanted to mention um, on the last video that I did, that was like 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, because I was behind schedule, um, I had talked about, gee, I guess you were expecting someone different, never mind, you came back home. <laughs> Hey everybody, sorry about that. It, it, our connection starts to spin and I know you're not seeing nothing. I had to stir dinner. We've got deer um, back straps in the pan and some leftover soup from the other night's neck roast. Now, back to what I was saying. The uh, neck roast uh, was something I was cooking up the other day and I was battling with myself on video, myself and my internal self, as to whether it was marrow that you needed to remove out of the neck roast. And it's actually the spinal cord. I knew that wasn't right, that's why I was struggling with that. So it's the spinal cord that you want to remove because it's going to make your meat taste, it's just going to make it taste funky. So um, remove the spinal cord, but cook up your neck roast. I mean, it is just amazing meat. I should have showed you guys all the meat I got off of, of my neck roast, and that was after we had already eaten a meal off of it. I was just cooking it down. So uh, keep that in mind. Hey, Jeff. and. Tamara said, for some reason, the broadcast keeps being interrupted. Yeah, it, it does that to me, living off grid and our internet connection, and it's Friday night, and the whole rest of the world is on the tower, too, so bear with me here. I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet. Also, um, the other day, I forgot to mention that my dear friend, um, who is also a Christian author, her name is Kathy Bryant. She has an amazing ministry going on, and I really want to share it with you guys because when she shared what she's been doing, it really struck my chord. It's just really something that I think is amazing. She is following God's lead and has put all of her ebooks on um, Amazon for free. And uh, her newest book is out there for 99 cents right now just because that's what Amazon does. Hi, Anita. Um, so what I, what I would love for you to do, if you like faith-based books, 
And even if you don't, I, I recommend that you try her series. She is such an amazing... Oh, I'm back. It's flickering. Okay, I'm going to give it a second here. All right, um, with her books, her when I pick up one of her books and start reading, it's really dangerous because I become addicted to wanting to know what's going on and I cannot put her books down. And she has put her books out on Amazon um, for free because she feels that God has told her to do that so that her ministry um, is and, and what she's doing, hi Maurice, so that what she's doing is found by more people and that more people can follow along with her ministry. Each of the books have different themes. They are um, all things that are um, prevalent in our society today that are struggles for people. Um, but she is just such a really good author. So you can find her books by going to tryourwilderness.com slash Kathy Bryant. The link is below in the description, so be sure to check her out. All of the ebooks are free. She does have print books also, but I believe she does charge for those because of the cost of printing. Um, but I, I believe there too it's minimal. So uh, definitely check it out, and you can find her website also through the Amazon link. But I think it's kathybryantwriter.com, if I'm not mistaken. I'll try to remember to put that on next the next uh, description. Now, as we move into the preparedness side of things, I want to talk about food storage. We've talked about, you know, from scratch cooking. Hi, Chad. And we've talked about, um, oh, hey, Daniel. I'm reading Daniel's message. Daniel has been leaving such amazing uh, um, messages and comments in each of the videos every night uh, in regard to what he is grateful for. And I encourage you guys to check them out. Um, but in, in regard to preparedness, we've been talking about um, your food pantry, what you put in it, um, from scratch cooking. Now I want to talk about um, food storage. And Sharon uh, Peterson joined me also, uh, and I need to put a link for her in the uh, description, because I did not. Um, cause she. Okay, like I said, guys, bear with me here. Um, Tonight's connection is going to be wonky just because of um, Friday night, a lot of people on, on the line. But I want to encourage you guys to check out my friend um, Sharon Peterson. You can go to tryerwilderness.com slash simply canning and you will find everything you need to know about canning. She is such a wealth of information and on there you will also find her books. Um, she has a great uh, canning uh, planner as well as uh, a lot of cookbooks that are amazing. I have them all on my shelf and I go to them all the time. Tonight I was focusing more on the food safe containers, the mylar bags, the uh, oxygen absorbers, but when I saw her pop on I realized I was missing one of the main components although we've talked about it um, and that is preserving and canning your food. So um, you will need you know canning jars which are huge that's one thing that we have a large stock of and I have to celebrate this my friend dear friend Amanda was kind enough to go to a thrift store in her area that was having a huge sale on canning supplies and she got me three and a half dozen canning jars wide mouth canning quart jars for thir okay for $13.35, I got three and a half dozen wide mouth quart jars. I was like so excited. So I totally zoned on remembering to mention that too, because that happened over the weekend. So I've got, I'm telling you, I have so many things to be grateful for. It's very hard to like just pick one or two. So anyway, those are the things I want to talk about tonight. Using food safe containers is so extremely important. I have some buckets that are not food safe, but I do not put my food in direct contact in those buckets. Um, I prefer to use all food, uh, food grade buckets and you can get them from your grocery store but one thing you do want to keep in mind and uh, be cautious of Pardon me, she's burning the food. I'm not burning it, I turned it down while it was spinning. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're peeking over my shoulder. You look like the guy on uh, Tool Time with Tim when he was peeking over the fence. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen in my zoo. <laughs> Okay, so now I forgot what I was saying. Now you've done it. Um, oh, the grocery store buckets, you got to be really careful. Make sure you ask if they have been used for any chemicals because sometimes they'll use them to clean things. 
and put chemicals in them so then I wouldn't want to use them to put my food in but typically um, the ones I get I am very fortunate where they have icing in them or something like that and they just have gotten them and hand them right over to me so that's a great way to get um, some of your food buckets but there are links um, in the description below um, you can go to try our hey we're back okay <laughs> thank you Daniel hey Lorraine good to see you <laughs> and thank you <laughs> okay I forgot what I was saying again when I started spinning like crazy um, the links is what I was sharing. Uh, below in the description, you will find uh, Treyer. He's getting old. <laughs> if I'm getting old, you're getting old too. So <laughs> anyway, treyerwilderness.com slash food grade containers uh, will take you to all your options with buckets and the varying different size buckets and the different type. <laughs> okay. Um, also, the other thing that you want to look into are Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers. It's a great way to store your food. Um, the oxygen absorbers go into the bag and they pull the oxygen out of the bag. Now, I'm going to say this. Um, I know a lot of people that use that method. I honestly and personally try to stay away from that method only because of being so sick last year. I stopped using and, and being near anything that's going to affect my body. So because the oxygen absorbers have chemicals in them, I just, I, I prefer to stay away from those. So my food safe buckets and my canning are how I store my food and my freezer as well. But those are the ways that I store my food. Um, the processed food that I do purchase, which is non-GMO packaged food, um, I do store that in Rubbermaid totes. Uh, we live in the middle of the wilderness. The mice know it's warm in here, so I take every ounce of effort away from them. They just can't get into my food. I, I don't want them in my food or near my food. So I do. that's how I store my food. Rubbermaid totes for anything that's um, in a package, and um, all my raw ingredients go in food safe buckets. I, you can also can in your food safe buckets. I'm sorry, jars dry canning. Um, you can put your oatmeal, your dry beans, and just dry can them, meaning that there's no liquid put in there. You're just preserving the dry ingredients in a canning jar, and you can um, use a food saver. Um, there's a link for that too, treyerwilderness.com slash food saver, which will enable you to um, remove all the air from the jars before closing them up. You can also put them in the oven. I like the idea of the food saver better than the oven um, just to eliminate um, any um, bacteria. I've got all kinds of people joining me in here. We've got Lila Lou, and there's Rambler. Lila, are you going to sing? Tell them. Sing. Tell them. Oh, sing, <laughs> sing, that's a good girl, you sing, my house gets crazy, I'm probably just making you guys all seasick, motion sick, <laughs> that's our um, Mountain Ben's five month old puppy, just turned five months, she's crazy, hi Julie, hi Linda, welcome, okay, um, now back to our food storage so um, Rachel had asked me on our last video so Rachel this is for you on on dry packing your food and that is definitely a great thing to do I do that as well um, it enables you to uh, take large bags and bulky items and put them in jars and put them on your canning shelves to eliminate uh, wasted space uh, unusual ob sized objects so you can do that as well um, the other thing I wanted to talk about today, and I want to try to get into this because it keeps cutting out on me, is gardening. So be sure to check out all the links below because I want to encourage you guys um, to check that out. Chad, you did say something about the Mylar bags and I can't see it on my screen anymore. Let me just see. I'm not even going to touch anything. I'm, I'll look at it when I'm done and message you or I reply to the message there. I'm sorry I missed what you said. Um, gardening is also a huge thing, um, very important aspect of self-reliance and preparedness. And um, right now is a great time for you to sit down and figure out what you're going to do with your garden or a new garden, how you're going to garden um, this coming year. Um, you can figure out what kind of seeds you need, um, how you're going to organize your garden, and educate yourself. And there are links below for this as well. Um, my one of my really good friends 
wrote uh, the Garden Notebook, and it is absolutely awesome. It is a an ebook, but it is a printable ebook, and you can purchase it once and print uh, print it out every year, and keep track of your yearly garden. And honestly, as he said, I'm getting old. We all are getting old, and we all are going to start forgetting to remember things. Keep your mouth quiet. <laughs> And therefore, it's really good idea to write things down. And it's also nice to be able to look back and reference the things that went on years past that you may have not uh, remembered without looking at that. So you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash garden notebook. And I highly encourage that. Now, there's also um, my, my really good friend Rick Stone from Stony Acres Farm, or Stony Acres, I'm sorry, um, has some great classes available. They are all listed below. I'm not going to mention all the links, um, but I will try to go through the different classes he has. He has a seed saving class. He has a basic gardening class. He has growing tomatoes. He has a PVC drip irrigation system class, and he has growing tomatoes, if I didn't say that. Um, his classes are really great. He is a master gardener. And uh, real quick, you can find him by going to treyerwilderness.com slash master gardener. And that should get you to all of his classes. But the links for the individual classes are in the description. And if you are new to gardening, I highly recommend him. He's uh, very easy to listen to. Um, his classes are very informative. And like I said, he is a master gardener. And I encourage everybody, regardless where you live, to, to grow food. Whether you're in an, on an, in an apartment or on a five acre plot or have a hundred acres, it doesn't matter. You have space regardless if you think you do or not. A uh, patio on an apartment um, would be a great spot to have uh, container gardening going on. You can also do hanging gardening and all kinds of things. Windowsill gardening. Uh, there's so many different options that you can do and I highly recommend uh, considering that and like I said this is a great time to do your research one of the things you want to do is uh, be certain of your areas growing um, season we have a very short growing season here we are in six actually part of five and part of six so it's important to know that because if you know that information you can base your planning on that and um, the other place I wanted to mention while I am thinking about it I just had to think about um, I'm going to have to think about this one. And if I don't recall, I will put it in um, tomorrow's uh, video. Seed purchasing is another big thing, and it's really important that you purchase non-GMO seeds. I have several great resources for that, so I will be sure to include those resources in the next description and include that in the video and mention that. But these are things that will uh, escalate your level of self-reliance and your level of preparedness in such a great way. Plus, you know what you're feeding your family. Everything that was in that pot the other night when I made the soup was from our, our garden at one time, because we didn't have a garden last year, or um, fresh off of a farm that is uh, no fertilizer and, and safe growing goods. So I'm sorry. I'm fitting out my words there. Anyway, live video, you gotta love it. So, knowing where your food comes from is huge. Exactly, exactly. Anyway, um, so those are two really big things that should be incorporated into your lives and into your preparedness. And um, the one important thing I want to mention for both things is um, to avoid overwhelm. You know, if you're going to do a garden for the first time, you don't want to plant every seed packet you can come across in your garden because you won't have a successful year. It's going to be very overwhelming. So what I recommend is if you're a new time gardener, to plant a couple of your family's favorite vegetables and, and go from there. Um, I also do have a medicinal and uh, herbal garden as part of my garden and I had my honeybees in there so my bees were getting all kinds of really good nutrition and in in turn so do we um, when it comes to your um, herbs dried herbs these are great containers for your dry herbs I do not have a link in there but I will add it later those are infinity jars you can find those by going to treyerwilderness.com slash infinity 
This is actually, it looks black, but it's actually a purple. It's a deep purple, and these are better than the amber jars to eliminate um, sunlight, and, and they also keep your um, herbs and anything you put in here. In that jar, it has a twist lid. You could put granola in there. But these are really great to keep your things um, safe and, and give them longevity. So what kind of questions do you guys have and what are some things that you would like to learn more about? I would love to know because um, we do all kinds of things out here and it's really hard to cover everything in 30 days but I'm covering the most important things and the things that you should, I feel you should be focusing on and starting with. Um, so and again guys thanks for joining me. Remember you can tag at sign Trayer Wilderness on Facebook and you can tag us on YouTube. Um, and hi Sheldon, good to see you. You missed it the other week I shared uh, Lois. Hey, on. I'm back. Sorry, it was spinning again. Hey Sheldon. <laughs> but Sheldon, I, I shared the uh, hand mixer that Glenna blessed me with that was Lois's and I thank you very much. That's an awesome piece for my kitchen. But guys, remember to uh, be grateful every day I mean, I'm grateful all day. There's so much that happens throughout my day that uh, just gives me joy and just knocks my socks off. I'm just so amazed at how God blesses us and how he works. Hi, Julie. Oh, yes. It, yes. Avoid overwhelm. Uh, just plant a couple things in your garden at a time. So many people dive in and, and, and that's how a lot of people start and then never continue because it's just so overwhelming. And that's with anything. So... Oh, you're very welcome, Chad, and God bless you and your family as well. But guys, since it keeps pausing, I'm probably going to jump off of here, but I want to encourage you to be grateful every day. Be, you know, focus on the positive things in your life, and trust me, your life will be so, so different. And when you're going through valleys and you're going through hard times, it will be so much easier if you do it that way than if you get stuck in the negative. So I want to always point that out and focus your lives on self-reliance and preparedness. Hey, Annie, um, and, and just be sure that you are learning something new, if not every day, at least every week. There is so much that we could be, and the more we challenge our brains, the better off we are. And if you incorporate gardening into your daily routine, gardening is also an area where you kind of unfocus, you um, totally enjoy what you're doing, and you get so absorbed. I love going barefoot in my garden and planting my seeds and just getting just totally detached from everything and um, I'll tell you what when I come out of that garden I think better I feel better and it's all just it's wonderful how everything incorporates together so I just want to encourage you guys be blessed be grateful and and be prepared and I'm gonna do my best to jump on tomorrow we've been having connectivity issues um, with the solar power issues we were having we were obviously having technology issues also because we didn't have power all the time so now that that's fixed, I'm celebrating, and I'm just thankful you guys all came out to join me. Those of you that are joining after the fact um, and not on the live videos, both on YouTube and Facebook, please leave your questions, your, your uh, items that you're grateful for, and feel free to tag us in your Instagram with pound sign Trayer Wilderness and pound sign Embrace Off Grid and pound sign Gratefully Prepared. And we will be uh, doing a drawing at the end of this. So uh, the book pile is getting larger. I've added a couple more books. So stay tuned to find out what other books I've added besides my How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle and Dave Ramsey's The Total Money Makeover. So guys, take care. Thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful and blessed weekend. And I hope to see you tomorrow. God bless.